Oh, mm. salam to not ain't I just a link greetings. This is when the macho yadin or ras yadinos tafari ras ayadonis tafari of the line of Jesus society of the imperial majesty. And as you can see, we're still continuing on the gala and camel in the afan orma. And we actually looked up in um one of the the Bibles, one of the orma Bibles that we have and there's the older one that was written by Onesius Nesset Onesius Nesset he was an uh, Oromo who actually was able to translate portions of the Bible um, for his respective people and he utilized the Ethiopic Fidel um, but since certain political and social events that happened in Ethiopia Many of the Ormos, they prefer to use the Latin um, letters or the Latin Fidel. And thus we have um, modern, more modern um, Ormo Bibles that are written actually in the English with English letters. Now that's good for I and I as far as those coming from the West who are familiar with the English uh, Fidel or letters or alphabet. However, there are certain issues concerning um, the superiority of using the Ethiopic Fidel, but we do understand certain social and other kind of um, situations that have happened in the Horn of Africa that has adversely affected the whole um, situation between the different nations, otherwise known as tribes. But in continuing on this particular theme of of Gala and Camel and the Afan Ormo and the Gemel, the Gemel, which we had incorrectly incorrectly stated as Gemel a little bit early, and we corrected ourselves. And then on this side, you can see it's the Gala and the, the, the Gala and the Gala or the Gul, Gula, Gala. But we've been told by a particular informant, um, Sharafuddin, who watches or at least checks out some of the videos that we post and has also um, commented, you know, but this is still a dialogue. You understand between I and I's Rastafari, you understand, and the, the Gullah people because my ethnicity, you could say, or my uh, tribal relationship of this people over here in the Americas is directly related to the Gullah, the Gullah people. That's why we were very interested and still are and seeing what possible connections between the so-called Gala, or formerly known as Gala people, and the Gullah people, or the so-called Geechee people. And we have found evidence of a, a, a linkage between the two people, and it's a very interesting portion of the teaching, and we've touched on it in part in the first two parts of a video that we have posted, a sort of a lecture, but there's more actually research going on on that. But what we want to touch on now is the word based on our informant or our Ormo informant named um, uh, Sharafuddin, who usually is very critical of things that we say and, you know, things concerning Ethiopia or the Christian, Judeo-Christian portion of Ethiopia, so forth and so on. But regardless of that, um, we decided to take up, you know, this Oromo or uh, Gala question about is Gala camel? Does Gala mean camel? You understand? He says in the Afan Oromo dialect, Gala actually means camel. And this is very interesting because um, in our research and portion of the scripture, um, we actually see that the word Gala is used you understand, for camel, and this is in the particular Afan Oromo dialect. Now, whether this remains true across the spectrum of different dialects that are related to the Oromo, we know not, you understand. However, we can say that this portion of information is right and exact. But now, besides that, we happen to look up um, camel in the sense of its metaphysical relationship because the camel is very interesting since the camel is not indigenous you see the camel is not indigenous to the highlands or the or the or the inner territory of Ethiopia or Ethiopia and if the Oromo people known as or called the Gala people have some relation to this particular um 
um, cam or whether they use the cam as a migratory pasture people so forth and so on is very interesting but moreover we want to share this on the camel so this is the camel this is the camel lesson I know people never thought we'd be talking about the camel but the camel is very important and in looking up in this uh, as we mentioned before the metaphysical Bible dictionary right by um, who was it Charles Fillmore from the Charles Fillmore reference library um we came across camel so give us a moment let's get that page it's on page 137 now grab your pen and your paper for this particular this particular teaching right here because now camel what about the camel now, an explanation of John the Baptist, John the Baptist, he was explained as being uh, clothed with, quote, camels here, or ye gimel tegur, according to Mateus Wengel, chapter 3, verse 4, is given as follows, that a camel, a camel symbolizes. Now, if Gala in the Afan Ormo um, dialect of the Ormo language means camel, then what about the camel? There must be something, because there's something special about the Gala people, the Ovisen or the Ormo people. So therefore, there must be something special you know, about camel if in their language, camel equals Gala. In other words, that's, that's the meaning, that's the interpreted meaning, right? So a camel symbolizes power of endurance, strength, and patience perseverance. Now these are very important and very good aspects. Now the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary is going to show us a little more insight into this and this is what we want to share with you all and discuss. So please um, pay attention and stay tuned for this. Now here is symbolical of power to equalize the inner and the outer life forces. So here is symbolical of the power to equalize the inner and the outer life forces. Something to meditate on. Now, as it goes forward, this much is said, right? As it goes forward, it says, He who sets himself to do the work of manifesting God, he who sets himself to do the work of manifesting God must have or be clothed with the power patience, perseverance, and strength of and strength of spirit. He who sets out to do the work of God. Now this is very key and very important. This is all under the symbology of the gimel or the gimel or the camel, which in the Afan Ormo is Gala. You understand? So that which might seem or been interpreted to be an insult, just like the nigger, the N word. You understand? If we go deeper and we follow it spiritually, we can see really the strength in that which at one time, you understand, was used pejoratively or derogatorily. You understand? So this is a lesson even for our Ormo or Gala people or even other persecuted peoples from the lost sheep, the Beta Israel. You understand? Because we are to be God's ministers of his truth and his righteousness. You understand? So now that we found ourselves, this is what we do with the love of God, and this is our labor, in other words, of love to share this. So he must will to seek, to know, to understand God, and to do his holy will. He must learn to discriminate between the thoughts, imaginations, desires of self, of self, and the visions and commands of God. This is a very important teaching that he who seeks and sets himself out to do the work of manifesting God as every true Rastafari must understand the lesson of the gimel or the lesson of the camel. The lesson of the camel. He must learn to discriminate, to discriminate between the thoughts, imaginations, and the desires of the self, of the individual self, and the true visions and commands of the true God. He must have strength to receive the spirit of wisdom to equalize the flow of thought substance and to harmonize, to harmonize 
the ideas of spirit with the manifestations of the outer world, with the manifestations of the outer world. He must put into practical, everyday use the truth of the absolute, to put into practice and everyday use the truth of the absolute, uninfluenced by the praise or the condemnation of man. He must put God before self. This is a very key lesson for I and I, especially in this time, to put the vision and the command of God before our individual self in the birth again process or the reborn, the regeneration process. This is a very central and important lesson to be learned and to be put into effect. All, must, all this must be done before he can recognize the Christ. So all this must be done before one within themselves can recognize the Christ. So even this lesson is a lesson in the mystery school of Christ, in the true mystery school of Jesus Christos, that all of this must be done before he can recognize the Christos, the spirit of God, the true spirit of God within within himself. This is true to Wahido, written its Haimano teaching. You understand? This is the practical application of it. You will see readily that the work cannot be done by the human self. This is, the, 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 this is fundamental, and we have also seen this truth, that the work cannot be done by our, human, by our human self. It can be accomplished only, only through the power, through the power of the manifest, through the power of the manifest produced, through the power of the Holy Spirit. A comparison to the camel. Now, here's what was very interesting. A comparison to the camel, the gimel, you understand, or in the Afan Ormo dialect, the gala, a uh, comparison of the gimel or the camel may be made of the Jews, may be made of the Hebrews, even the ethnic Hebrews, even the Ihud of I and I. In their zeal for God, their religious worship, they had the camel's persistence the camel's persistence and patient determination. So the camel has a persistence and a patient determination to the point of seeming obstinacy, to that point of seemingly being obstinate about the, the worship of God and being persistent and, and, and patiently determined in it. On the other hand, they, speaking of our ancestors, were just as zealous were just as zealous in the pursuit of idols and idolatry and materialism and worldliness. This is a good example for black people. This is a very ideal example for the lost sheep today. You understand this comparison of the gimel or the camel to the Jews or to the Ihu, the Hebrews, the black Hebrews. Now, camels are, quote, appropriately called the ships of the desert. This is the key because if in Afan Ormo, camel is not Gimel, but it's Gala, and therefore this people known as the Ormo were called the Gala, and one possible reference can be made to the Afan Ormo, then let's look at this right here, that appropriately they're called the ships of the desert, because in the highlands of Ethiopia, the camel is not and one of the indigenous animals is the ships of the desert. As you come into the heartland of Ethiopia, you understand what you have is God's wilderness. You have a verdant, in, in its true nature, a verdant green plateau and mountainous. You know, you have food on the mountaintops, just like in, in the prophetic books when it speaks about the New Jerusalem, the African Zion, so forth, and so on. So they're appropriately called the ships of the desert. Now, Philo says, one named Philo, he says this. Now, to the ability to go long distances without outer nourishment, to go long distances without any outer nourishment, quote, are added a lofty stature and great agility, eyes that discover minute objects. Camels have eyes that discover minute objects in and at a distance. A sense of smelling of prodigious, prodigious acuteness. A spirit, moreover, of patience, not the result of fear. So they have a spirit of patience, 
but not the result of fear. Camels are not fearful, in other words, creatures, but of forbearance. Forbearance carried to the length, carried to that length of self-sacrifice in the practice, in the practice of obedience. Without the existence of the gimel or the camel, immense portions of the surface of the earth would be uninhabitable and even impassable. In other words, without that camel to be that so-called like a, that beast of burden. Now, it's very important that this, all of this be understood, especially in link with the gala, afan, orimal, the gimel, the camel, and the whole experience of, of the orimal. You understand, the positive and the negatives, you understand, being, being considered. When we say or, the Amhara, the Amhara are not a tribe in the sense of a tribe, but are a sultane, are a certain civilization, a certain covenant. And within that Amhara um, identity, many Oromos contributed greatly to. If you understand now the metaphysical of the Gimel, you could understand that the more refined and the finer aspects of the so-called, quote, Amhara identity was contributed by this people that was named after the Gimel in their own language, Gala. You understand that? So, just moving forward, surely the Arabs, the Arabs, are right, quote, Job's beast, Job's beast, right, Job's beast is what? Job's beast is a monument of God's mercy. In other words, this animal known as the camel was also called Job's, 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 Job's beast. Now, the, the Arabs called the camel Job's beast in reference to its great patience, in reference to its great patience and forbearance. The thought of these characteristics in the camel, in the gimel, or the Afan Ormo Gala, and their great value, their great value, recalls to mind the words of the master of Gietachin, quote, in your patience ye shall win your souls. In your patience ye shall win your lives. So this is just an introduction. This is just the beginning. You understand? But it's a very important introduction into the metaphysical, you understand, um, references and comparisons of the camel, both scripturally and then in the revelation of Arastafari vis-a-vis the people once known as the Gala, connected to our people over here known as the Gala. So this is a very, very important teaching, and please stay tuned to more. Salam tana. Aina Yustalin, in a Ras Yadinos Tefari reporting.